Our objectives in this lesson are the following. Identify the principal root and illustrate the properties of radicals. Prerequisite knowledge required are table of squares and table of cubes. I also suggest you take time to watch my lesson on exponents part 2. This is where I first introduced radicals. Let's have a review first. The expression 4 raised to 3 over 2 is what we call the power. The power represents the base and the exponent. 4 is what we call the base. 3 is the numerator of the exponent, while 2 is the denominator of the exponent. This expression is equivalent to the square root of 4 cubed. 2 is what we call the index or root, which is the denominator of the exponent in the exponential form. 4 is the radicand, which is the base in exponential form, while 3 is the exponent, which is the numerator of the exponent in exponential form. This is also equivalent to the quantity is square root of 4 to the third power. Once again, radical is the expression in this form. And this is read as n root of a or a radical of order n. This is the radical symbol. a is the radicand, which can be any real number. And n is the index or root of the radical, which is greater than or equal to 2. Take note that if the index is omitted, it is understood that n is equal to 2. Let us talk about principal root. We have four possible cases here. First one, when a is positive and n is add, there is only one real root and it is a positive root. Example, cube root of 8. Our n is 3 and 3 is an add number. Our radicand is 8 and it is a positive number. If this is the case, we only have one real root and it is a positive root. The answer to cube root of 8 is equal to positive 2. Next case, when a is negative and n is odd, there is only one real root and it is a negative root. Example, cube root of negative 8. Again, our n is an odd number. But this time, our radicand is a negative number. If this is the case, we still have one real root, but this time, it is a negative root. The answer to cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. Next case, when a is positive and n is even, there are two real roots, one positive and one negative. Example, square root of 100. Since nothing is written in the index, it is understood that that is 2, and 2 is an even number. Our radicand is positive, so we have two real roots, one positive and one negative. Those are positive 10 and negative 10. But if we are going to talk about principal, we will consider the positive root. Next case, when a is negative and n is even, there is no real root. Just an imaginary number. Example. So again, there is nothing written in the index, so it is understood that that is 2. And 2 is an even number. But this time, our radicand is a negative number. If this is the case, there are no real roots. Take note, if there is no positive real root, but there is a negative real root just like this one, this negative root is considered to be the principal nth root of the given number. Let us determine the principal nth root of the following. Number 1 is square root of 81. Our index is 2 and our radicand is a positive number, so we have two possible roots, one positive and one negative. But since we are talking about principal, we're just going to consider the positive 1. And square root of 81 is equal to 9, since 9 squared is equal to 81. Number 2, cube root of 125. Our n is an odd number, and our radicand is a positive number. We have one real root, and that is a positive root, and the answer to cube root of 125 is positive 5, since 5 cubed is equal to 125. Next one. Cube root of negative 27. Our index is add. 
our radicand is a negative number, so we have one possible root, and that is a negative root. The answer to this is negative 3, since quantity negative 3 cubed is equal to negative 27. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9, and 9 times negative 3 is negative 27. Next one, number 4, is square root of negative 16. Our index here is 2, and our radicand is a negative number. If this is the case, no real root. If you are thinking about 4 squared, 4 squared is equal to 16, not negative 16. If you are thinking about quantity negative 4 squared, that is also equal to 16, not negative 16. Since there is no number that when raised to an even exponent will give you a negative number, then there is no real root. Next one, 4th root of 256. Our index is an even number. And our radicand is a positive number, therefore we have two possible roots, one positive and one negative. But we are going to consider the positive one for the principal root. And the answer to this is equal to 4, since 4 to the 4th power is equal to 256. Let's talk about properties of radicals. Let A and B be any real numbers and M and N be positive integers greater than 1. First one. The nth root of a to the m is equal to the quantity of nth root of a to the m. Sample, cube root of 2 to the 4th is equal to the quantity cube root of 2 to the 4th power. So the exponent here is transferred outside. Next one, the nth root of a times nth root of b is equal to the nth root of ab. If the indices are the same, you can combine the radicand into one radical symbol. So this is multiplication. We multiply a and b. Sample, the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. The indices are the same. Both are 2. So let's multiply 4 and 5, and that is 20. So we have a square root of 20. Next, the nth root of a divided by the nth root of b is equal to the nth root of a over b, provided b is not equal to 0 because dividing by 0 is undefined. So just like in multiplication, if the indices are the same, we can combine the radicand into one radical symbol. So example, we have the cube root of 27 divided by the cube root of a. Since both have index of 3, so we can combine it as cube root of 27 over 8. Next, the m root of the nth root of a is equal to m times n root of a. So what we did here is we just multiply the indices. So example, cube root of the square root of 64, 3 times 2 is equal to 6, so we have 6th root of 64. Next, we have the quantity nth root of a raised to n is equal to a. So what happened here? The nth root and the exponent n were cancelled out, so what remains is the value of the radicand. Sample, so we have the quantity cube root of 64 to the third power. So the cube root and the third power are cancelled out. So what we have is 64. Next, if n is even, then the nth root of a to the n is equal to the absolute value of a. Sample, fourth root of the quantity negative 4 to the fourth power. Since our index is even, we are just going to get the absolute value of our a. So absolute value of negative 4 is equal to 4. Remember, absolute value means the distance of that number from 0. Since there is no negative distance, then the absolute value is just the positive equivalent of that number. Next, if n is odd, then nth root of a to the n is equal to a. Example, the cube root of quantity negative 8 to the third power, since our index is add, we just have to copy our value of a, and that is equal to negative 8. There is no need to get the absolute value if the index is an add number. Last one. The nth root of 0 is equal to 0. So example, the 9th root of 0 is equal to 0. 
Let us apply the properties of radicals. Number 1, cube root of 27 squared. So this is also equivalent to the quantity of cube root of 27 raised to the second power. Next one is square root of 9 times square root of 7. The index here is 2. The index here is also 2. So we can combine this into one radical symbol. And 9 times 7 is 63. So we have a square root of 63. Next, cube root of 64 divided by cube root of 8. The indices are the same, so we can combine them into one radical symbol. Cube root of 64 over 8. And 64 over 8 is 8, so we have cube root of 8. Next, is square root of negative 121. Our index here is 2, that is an even number. And our radicand is a negative number, therefore we do not have real root. Next, the square root of the cube root of 30. So all we have to do is to multiply the roots. 2 times 3 is 6. So we have 6th root of 30. Next one, number 6, quantity is square root of 11 is squared. So the index here is 2. Is square root and squared will be cancelled out. So the answer is just this one, which is 11. Next one, the square root of quantity negative 13 is squared. Since the index here is 2, and that is an even number. Therefore, we have to get the absolute value of this. And the absolute value of negative 13 is 13. Next one, the fifth root of quantity 32 to the fifth power. Since the index is odd number, then simply copy this and the answer here is 32. Next one, the cube root of negative 10 to the third power. Once again, our index is odd, so we simply have to copy this one. And that is negative 10. No need to get the absolute value because the index is an odd number. Last one, number 10, 11th root of 0 is still 0. Now it is time to check your understanding. Pause this video for more time. <laughs> Let us answer. Evaluate the following. Consider all roots possible. Number 1 is square root of 144. Index here is 2 and that is even. The radicand is positive number. Therefore, two possible roots, positive and negative 12. Next one, cube root of 216. Index is odd. The radicand is positive. So we have one possible root and that is a positive root. Answer here is positive 6. Number 3, cube root of negative 64. The index is odd. The radicand is negative. Therefore, we have one possible root and that is a negative root. The answer here is negative 4. Number 4, fourth root of negative 16. The index is even. The radicand is negative. Therefore, no real root. Last one, the square root of quantity 81 squared. The index here is 2 and that is an even number. Therefore, we have to get the absolute value of 81. And the absolute value of 81 is still 81. Gets?